what I want to go over is some alternative ways of thinking about drawing. Now, one of the things that uh, everyone is used to is the idea of the structural drawing of the Loomis head or even the Riley method. These are not the only ways of drawing. There are ways of drawing that have existed long before these. So in this video, what I'm doing is basically instead of starting out with a, a circle or an oval for his cranium and then working all those other shapes, I'm looking at his head and I'm just determining what type of head he has. To me, it's uh, especially the law on the top of the head, it looks more like a box. It looks more like a, yeah, like a box or a square. And he has a square shaped head and then it going down to the chin, it forms into a triangle before it goes into his beard and there's like within that beard there's somewhat of a triangle on the side each side of the beard that's is divided down the middle and his mustache also forms a triangle so i'm looking at all these different shapes and i'm breaking it up into these shapes that i see so i'm not using the loomis method but i am putting that grid i am breaking it up into thirds according to his the, the line for the hairline going up for uh, up and down from the hairline to the line for the brow to the line for the nose to the line for wherever his chin might wind up because it's underneath that beard but I'm I'm respecting that and I'm still measuring things out so that the features can be placed where they should be placed in proportion to one another and in proportion to his head. So I'm still thinking, even though I'm not drawing the oval for the cranium, I'm still thinking that uh, I'm still thinking of his head as a skull shape, only it's not so round. You know, it, it is round, but it is it, it can fit comfortably into a square and I can start off with a box shape. And I'm thinking the same way I would think with drawing like a, a mass drawing, uh, like what I would do was just basically think of a sculptor and how a sculptor works with a lump of clay and um, takes things out, shapes things, adds things, and manipulates the clay. Right at this point, the thing that's great about thinking this way is that mistakes are fine not deliberate mistakes you try to be as accurate as possible so that you you wind up making fewer and fewer corrections but it's forgiving in that once you put something down you have something to work with something to change something to correct so from the beginning I'm not worried about making mistakes I am trying my best to be as concise and what I see and what I put down and, and to, to, um, to, to just interpret it as closely as I can or, or interpret it or, or follow what I see as, as close as I can. But I'm open to making changes as I go on. Like again, like a sculptor who, uh, takes things in, he takes things out, put things in and so forth, and then continues to shape the, the, the clay. So um, what I'm doing initially right here from the start is I'm mapping out where the features go. And then I'm, I'm also mapping out where the lights and darks go because I'm thinking of these things at the same time. I'm just not thinking of uh, uh, the, the lines for where the features go but I'm thinking of where my darks are going to go I'm thinking of the direction of the light and so forth so it's not just thinking in line even though at this point um, um, you know it's very linear as far as um, I'm just drawing using line and not tone or, or not putting down values and so forth but that's something that I can begin to do later on so at, at this stage of the game I'm still thinking of lights and darks, but I'm thinking of it as kind of like a, a, a drawing a map, drawing like sections of where I'm going to 
put things and so uh, not just the features but put the 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 darks and and how i'm going to model this uh when the time comes so i'm just setting it up for it is what i'm doing right now and i'm realizing as i make these videos that i'm pretty comfortable with drawing and i'm, I'm jumping ahead you know i'm just making these shapes for the eyes and and, and the nose and so forth and i'm drawing a nose and I guess that from the beginning, I, you got to realize that there's a structure underneath that nose. There's like the cartilage and so forth. And actually, that takes like separate videos when you talk about doing the features and um, and how how these features fit into the head, like the socket, how the, the, the socket for the eye, how the eyeball fits into that socket and then the 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 skin envelopes it and, and forms the lid and so forth how the nose is shaped by the cartilage of the, the the that's that's attached to the bone and because most of that nose is not bone at all but most of it is cartilage and that's what gives it its shape same thing for the ear so these things deserve a, a separate video a separate look into how to how to do these things but for right now I'm what what I'm demonstrating is this even though you know there, there's like I said I'm breaking this into thirds and so forth similar to the methods that you would use doing a Loomis head or anything else because those proportions remain the same now they change according to the person that you're drawing like here I was comfortable using a box shape for his head or somewhat of a box shape for his head because it fits his head this particular person's head better than that cranium and uh, even though I could have used that as well what I'm just saying is that there there's not just if you don't stick to that like because there's different ways of drawings and there's some people who are not comfortable with uh, certain aspects of Loomis or or, or what have you or, or think that um, Riley is really complicated but again as I said in, in the previous videos is that it's not the only way the thing is that take in the information that you can if even if you don't understand it right now you will find it useful later on as you continue to draw it'll begin to make sense as you or, or you know what or some of it will be you can discard as you see fit because it's really up to you what you feel comfortable with and what gets you a, a good drawing based on what you understand and uh, it's okay if you don't understand parts of it or or even the whole of it you just keep going you keep going because as a student I remember that I didn't I didn't apply any of these things I basically learned how to draw um, doing mass drawing and I'm talking about when I got beyond the kitty stuff when I was a kid you know um, I just drew uh, and I drew other you know, like copies of other artwork uh, I drew copies of stuff I saw in comic books and and things like that and, and uh, um, whatever drawings attracted me sometimes it would be an illustration or whatever so that I really didn't have any particular type of training so when I first started learning how to draw from a live model what I was taught was uh, a type of uh, mass drawing where I would um, make some quick indications of where I want things to fit on the page and then I, I would break that down to the different shapes depending on what I would put in like say it was a, um, a head and torso so I would begin to place where the head is going to be the neck and and you know part of the the, 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 the shoulders and so forth and I, I would find out where I would place that on my my uh, page and if I wasn't going to include the hands and so forth once I set that all up and break it down into where I was going to place the hands, where I was going to place the head and so forth, I start breaking that down into the lights and darks that I see there. So I would continue to draw that way. 
and by making this envelope and then refining it. And then later on, what, what happened with me is that there were some things that I needed to learn to help me out of some bad habits. Like the habit I had was not really being able to line up the features like the nose, not, not the nose, I'm sorry, the eyes would not line up with each other and I didn't know how to correct that. So what I did was I started applying some things that I, I saw when people were doing like more structural type of drawing. And I, at that time, I had no idea of who Loomis was or anything like that. But I've seen other artists do similar things that, that not exactly Loomis, but similar things. And I, I would try to apply that. Then later on, many, many years later, uh, someone mentioned the name Loomis, some artist that I really enjoyed his work and mentioned the name Loomis. And, um, and then I, I researched you know, uh, um, the fact that this, this guy was an influence on, on, uh, um, this artist. So I researched him, found out about the books, found out that at that time, more people started talking about Loomis. So, um, so I started adding that to what I knew. Um, then going back years later, years afterwards, um, what happened was that, uh, I, I started going back to the way I originally started drawing or originally learned how to draw but I added all this other stuff to it so all these things can culminate into a new way of working a new way of looking at things so even if you what I'm saying even if you don't understand it now just kind of kind of put it in, in just put it in your mind and keep it there and, and see how you can apply these things and work at it. You know, that's what a sketchbook is for, right? A sketchbook is not so you can take around and show everybody what, you know, what a great artist you are. A sketchbook is basically to show, uh, to, for you to work out things. You know, you don't, I, I, I enjoy sketchbooks where people do like really finished artwork and really finished drawings and for them, the purpose of that might have been just to, to learn and try out some new things and and it, it culminated in, in whatever image they have in the sketchbook and it looks great um, but then again um, there you know I've seen people have sketchbooks and it's all fi basically finished illustrations I mean sketchbook is a place for ideas sketchbook is a place for studies sketchbook I, I love the sketchbooks that have all of this that have like the studies the 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 the, the, the trying to find out things the uh, rough sketches and then you know you finalize things as you go on down um it, it's more about exploring and that's what a sketchbook should be so you know a sketchbook where you you put in all these ideas all these things that you're learning like the you know if you have a hard time with Loomis just try and work it out in your sketchbook if you have a hard time with Riley try to work it out in your sketchbook if you have a hard time with mass drawing try to work it out in your sketchbook anything that you have a hard time with that's what a sketchbook is for and you take that and you 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 bring that into your finished work you know but basically you need some place where you can collect your ideas, where you can collect your thoughts, where you can uh, be feel free to manipulate things, to change things, to to work things out, and feel free to make mistakes. There, there, um, there are a lot of times where I torn out pages and just threw them in the garbage and whatever. It's not a big deal because the main thing is what did I learn. From the experience sometimes even when um i do a bad drawing i would keep it you know and i would i would uh try and figure out what why why is it a bad drawing and what do i need to correct sometimes i do a good drawing at the time and um you know maybe a week later a month later and I'll look at it and I'll say, well, I need to make some changes here or I need to correct things. Or I might just leave it alone and just say, you know what, I'll do better the next time. 
and maybe I might do a drawing where I'm completely happy with. And a year or two later, I'd say to myself, gee, that's not as good as I thought it was. Which is a good thing because it shows that, you know what, I've, um, I've grown beyond it. That I've changed and I've gotten better as an artist. Um, and, and it makes a difference. Like right now, um, I'm looking back at a lot of the drawings that I did. And I, I'm totally unhappy with, with, with the majority of them. Uh, but, you know, that goes for me to show that I, I've learned so much in that time that I began to apply to my drawing. So here I am at this point where um, I'm not, you know, by any means not perfect, not where I want to be, but I'm learning more and more things and I'm applying them. I'm learning how to marry the, uh, the, the, the things that I'm learning now to the old things that I knew before and just kind of add to my arsenal a new way of drawing things or a new way of seeing things, a new way of uh, applying whatever I need to apply to make a better drawing. So that and that that's pretty much where I am I'm at now. And what I'm sharing with everyone is is really it's not what I've known all along, but what I've continued to learn. There's an artist, a Japanese artist, um gosh, I can wish I can remember his name right now. Uh famous artist. He did the uh these prints he did long before manga was comic books. He, mangas were these sketchbooks that Japanese artists would put out, and um, he and they were prints of Mount Fuji. He had that famous print of the wave, um, Hokusai. Hokusai is his name, right? And there's so many things said about Hokusai, but uh, uh, about his. His particular sayings or quotes that people like to uh, um, share every now and then, especially artists. Um, one of them was that, you know what, he, he talked about when he was young, you know, he had a mania for drawing many things. And then as he grew older, you know, he, he learned, you know, he just talked about how he progressed. And then he got, he said he got to the age of 70 and he considered everything that he did before then was to be nonsense you know then he got he said that as he's getting older you know he's he he's looking into the future and talking about how he's going to be much better and then at some point he's going to discover the, the certain mysteries or whatever and and he says if i live to be 102 or something like that he says you you know mark my words you will see it right uh he didn't live that long but um, the idea of that you're always learning, that you're always getting better is, you know, that that was Hawkeye's mindset. And um, and the, the more things that you can add on to what you already know and more f your um, the way you work into who you are becoming, you know, and and that really is is. Uh, um, my thinking and where I'm at now. So in all these things, you know, I, I have, like I said, uh, I've applied certain things in this drawing with regard to what I've learned from Loomis what I've, and what I'm continuing to learn from, from Loomis or from Riley or from, uh, and then I'm adding, I'm, I'm adding to what I had known or what I've learned before. You know, just thinking of things in mass and having that idea of the artist working as a sculptor uh, modeling his clay. So I'm adding that to what I already know. And this is what I've come up with. So it's a way of working. It's a way of um, putting down an image. And it's a, also a way of not being afraid that if you don't know something, just pick up your pencil and continue to draw. And then, um, you know, you, you, you'll find, you'll find your answers as you learn 
or as you absorb the things that you see and as you draw. A lot of times I didn't even have like these how-to books. Um, like there's uh, the, the book by Loomis of uh, um, drawing the head and hands. There's um, other books which are, are great books. But really what I did was go to art museums and look and observe the paintings and the drawings that I can see there. Or um, look at illustrations in a book, look at artists, uh, um, and look at you know the ways they worked, and see what I can adopt to to what it is that I do. And it really, there really wasn't a, 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 a how-to or or the steps to do these things that I had, but there was a, a, a research, there was observation. And there was trying to figure out how can I take what I learned from a visit to a museum and apply it to what it is that I'm doing. So there, there, there were many times where I, I loved going to museums and I looked at the paintings by Sargent or Homer or, um, or, or Rubens or, or Velasquez or, or Rembrandt and I, I just you know, sometimes I, I just uh, um, don't want to stand in front of the paintings for so long because I'm afraid that, you know, I, uh, um, if I don't hurry back and start drawing these things or start drawing, I, I'll lose what it is that I learned from, from the experience of, of looking at and observing these paintings. But uh, um, that was a way of learning. That was a way of learning that, that I had back then. I mean, it's great to have these how-to books, you know, but it's also great to, um, to observe things and, and to um, look at how you can apply what you've learned from an, a particular artist to your own artwork. You know, that, that, that was the way that, um, that artists from the past learned. Their drawings... By Michelangelo of, of frescoes that he copied by Giotto and I, I don't know if I'm uh, pronouncing the name right but Giotto and, and there's um, Masaccio I think is the other guy um, the drawings as a young man or as a teen that Michelangelo made of these frescoes um, that, that he saw in Florence and then later on Rubens uh, uh, on viewing the Sistine Chapel made some drawings based on some of the figures that he saw that were painted by Michelangelo. And, you know, sometimes he would incorporate the pose in his painting or sometimes he would uh, um, take that and, and draw it in reverse. Just, uh, you know, whatever he can do to learn from an older master, you know, what he can, what he can learn to apply to his own work. So that was how I learned when I was in high school. And we didn't have the internet. Um, we didn't have, you know, there was no YouTube or anything like that. So we learned in classrooms and we learned in museums. Um, and, you know, books were expensive. And I, I managed to buy quite a few books. But the only how to book I had, there was two. And that was uh, um, George Brid the Bridgman books, where his figure drawing books, uh, um, uh, his anatomy books. And I was lucky enough to find a copy of a book called Rockwell on Rockwell. And Rockwell on Rockwell was uh, just a, um, a book by, by Norman Rockwell that was based on the classes that he taught at the famous artist school. It's a great book to have, and, and I wore out my copy, and I managed, by luck, to find another one. So I'm keeping that copy as pristine as I can while I continue to, to mar out the, the older copy. But um, that, that was a lucky find because that book was out of print even when I bought it back then. So, and it's harder to find today. But um, those are the only two how-to books that I really had. Uh, so apart from, there was a how-to book on, a, on on pen and ink drawing that I also liked that I got from my sister who bought it, who, who gave it to me actually. And, um, and that's it. 
most of what I learned was by observation. By now, I, I had art books, and I observed the, the the paintings, the drawings, the illustrations, and so forth in those art books. But they weren't how-to books. It was a matter of just observing and looking and learning from the artists that I admire. At this point in the video, I basically got everything down. I've got the the big shape of the head down and then where the eyes and the nose and all the features fit in within that big shape and the placement of the ear and so forth. So right now, the only thing left to do is basically refine everything. This is the point where, you know, once everything's down, you can you can start looking and seeing where you need to tweak something, where you need to make changes. And you'll see that I'm going all over, like I'll start working on this eye and then I'll move, jump someplace else because I compare it to uh, some other place. Uh, you know, if I make an adjustment in one area, I can look at making an adjustment in the other. Or I might look, you know, I might look somewhere if I, if I don't, um, don't realize what I want or don't uh, understand what it is I'm drawing at at this point where like if I'm working on the eye and I, I haven't quite solved it I can move on somewhere else and say I'll get back to that so I keep moving around and changing things and trying to like like again the analogy of the the the, uh, the, the sculptor with the clay trying to change things here and there to make sure that I, I arrive in it and end where I'm, I'm satisfied with, where I, I feel like the drawing works. So what I'm doing is at this point I'm just refining everything after I've uh, placed where everything is supposed to go and I'm making changes. I'm using the eraser uh, almost as much as I'm using the, pen, the my pencil. So I'm, I'm the marks that you take out are just as important as the, as the marks that you leave in because you you know you realize some things don't need to stay some things need to change or maybe you overemphasize something or I overemphasize something and and I need to, to, to knock that back a little or I need to change the shape of um, one particular area I need to change some shapes or I realize there's something that that um, that I didn't see before that I can put in now. Yeah, so many things, so many things. So the eraser becomes very, very important because in order for you to arrive at a drawing that you would be satisfied with, you have to recognize your errors. You have to recognize your mistakes and not, you know, not be upset over them, but be glad that you can see it and can make the changes and then move on. And, and try also to see ahead of time. Like I said, uh, one of the things that I'm doing is also thinking about where I'm going to place the the darks, where I'm going to, what what am I going to leave light? And so these are the things that I'm thinking of ahead of time where later on I would start working on the shadows and start using the stump as well as the pencil and the eraser. And even at that stage, I continue to make changes because this whole thing is open to change up until the very end. The eraser becomes as much a tool as the pencil. So, and then it's good at this point to mention that you need to have, you need to be working on good paper, not lousy paper, in order to be able to make as, as many corrections as you want to. If you work on lousy paper, it's just, you'll know it as soon as you start um, erasing because uh, some papers can only take so much eraser. So um, I make sure that when I'm working on something like this, I work on a good sheet of paper, something that can take a lot of erasing, something that uh, um, has more of a rag content. By rag content, what I mean, a lot of papers that, that you purchased are basically made out of wood pulp and wood pulp is is acidic so so it'll it'll yellow with age and it'll get crumbly with age and so forth and it's not very you know at times it's not very strong paper it can be but but the better paper 
is the one that has the rag content. Like you see papers that are like 100% rag, 100% cotton, and so forth. And they, they'll have cotton, they're, they're made from cotton rather than wood pulp, and they don't have acid, or they'll have... Um, now, you can buy paper that's made from wood pulp, wood pulp that's um, free of acid. That is, it has a um, something that blocks the acid from from uh, making the paper deteriorate. But I think over time, it, 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 you know, that kind of breaks down. But uh, the, now, there there are good papers in terms of, of they're they're tough that you can use and can take a lot of eraser. But um, but the better paper is something preferably with a rag content. And it, it's a, a much nicer paper to work with, too. Um, so anyway, like I said, you, the, the eraser becomes as much of a tool as the pencil. And, uh, um, and you use that to, to make any corrections you need to make and to continue to refine your drawing. And that's pretty much it at this point. At this point, it's just uh, darkening the lines that I need to darken, refining this as I go on. Or when I say darkening the lines, it's like finalizing the lines that I want to keep and taking out the lines that I, I don't want to, to leave in the drawing and just refining the drawing as I go on. So I'm going to speed up the, the rest of this video and um, because pretty much... Uh, what I'm doing is just uh, racing to the finish, and that is, um, like I said, refinement, tweaks here and there. So I want to really thank you guys for staying with me this long. I know this is a long video, but I did. I purposely wanted to do the majority of this in real time, um, and even though like I'm finishing now with the, um, speeding up the video, which is fine because. The majority of the work was already done. This is just selecting the lines that I want to keep and refining the lines. There's a little bit of rendering or, or a bit of rendering that, that I can do here and there, like with the hair and so forth. But for the most part, you know, the drawing is pretty much done. It's just a matter of refining and, and making some final decisions on what I want to keep and what I want to take out and so forth. So... Um, like I said, thank you for following me this long, and I'm going to continue this video. I'm going to go ahead and add another video uh, or, or post another video where I'm going to take the same drawing, and I'm going to work out the darks and the lights and, and, uh, um, and just finish up the drawing and not leave it at this stage where it's basically all linear and all it is right now is a map. Uh, uh, of uh, where I want the darks to go as as well as a map or a placement that shows the placement of the features and, and how they relate to one another in proportion and so forth. So that's pretty much it. So thank you for following me this far. Like I said, uh, I will be back with another video where I will finish this drawing. Bye-bye.